Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this fantasy peacock in palms, waterfalls, and sun rays. Hope you guys enjoy this one and you're going to be sure to learn a lot. We're working on a large canvas today but you can do this on any size canvas that you want. Square would work best for this. Mine happens to be two by two feet. I'm using an angle brush, light green yellow. I'm using titanium white and phthalo blue. Those are the only colors we'll be using today for this painting. And I'm just going to start in the corner, the top left corner, and pull and flick for some soft sun rays just to begin. I'm using a little bit of water as well to help um, thin that paint out and make it more transparent. Okay, for the next stage of this painting, we're going to start working on our palms. I'm still using my angle brush and I'm going to show you how easy and simple it is and effective to use this brush to make palm leaves. Taking white, green and phthalo blue, I'm going to pull an arch or an arc and then pull and flick a bunch of arches off of that one long one and make all individual ones like this highlighting with more of the green and the white where I want it to be nice and bright and then where I want to have more contrast I'll add more of the blue. I'm not really washing my brush out too much I like to have a hint of those colors in there making each one of these little leaves have a different amount of light shadow going on. It helps to make your paintings look a lot more realistic and your foliage. So I'm going to just keep this same technique going and creating a whole bunch of different palms in different directions and then I'll add a few waterfalls in along with this too just because I thought it would be fun and help create that nice tropical vibe and setting. Okay, so taking a little bit more of my white this time, I'm going to start coming in, just kind of curving over slightly, pulling and dropping and flicking. And I'm going to do a few different levels and tiers of waterfalls, sometimes using more white, sometimes using a little bit more blue. I will be adding more white to highlight them um, as this painting progresses, just because the highlight tends to dull a lot quicker when working on a black canvas. But, um, oh, and I did go over the canvas I'm using, so it is a two by two feet canvas, but I painted over a white one just with um, a thin, loose craft black paint. So you don't need to go and buy a, a black canvas. If you have black gesso, that works wonderfully too, but you can just get away with using some uh, black paint. So I'm gonna create the little pool of water where these waterfalls are dropping into and falling into by adding a little bit more blue where I want it to look like it's more in shadow and create that uh, feeling of depth. And then more white kind of in the center to create that glow of light and a little bit more of um, a shallow feeling to it. Okay, it's time to start coming in with a peacock. I'm gonna start with a head and I'm using the, the angle brush. You can use um, any brush you feel comfortable with using. I like the lines that I'm able to get with this. I can make them look a little bit more rounder and curvier, but I can also get an edgy look to it. Um, but if you're just a beginner, I would recommend using a filbert brush. I think it would be a lot easier for you and then making the beak um, by using a different brush um, such as a flat one or a liner brush. It will be a little bit trickier to get the beak um, with a, a, a brush that has a round end to it so just keep that in mind. So I'm just using more white than any of the other colors, the yellowy green or the blue. Um, this part is going to be the brightest part of the bird and so just a simple sort of egg shaped head 
and then it's going to go up just slightly higher on the very top and then we'll come out and make a pointy skinny triangle for the bee just keep it really really simple and if you're not sure and in a little bit intimidated about creating the shape of the body not the feathers yet but just the, the where the stage we're at right now have a look at it and what does it resemble well when i first look at it uh it looks like uh the number two so you could just do like a number two and then go off from that making the head a little bit thicker and exaggerating more of those curves so that really helps to break things down is when you see shapes numbers or letters um, helps me I know a lot of other artists have done this for years and years so I just thought I'd add that little tip in there for you guys if you're feeling a little bit intimidated or overwhelmed at times just using the tip of my brush I'm going to add uh, some more palms in here and more blue I added a little bit to begin those feathers by using the corner of my brush and creating little messy looking kind of circles that get start off a little bit smaller and then get a little bit bigger but I'm going to be using a different brush soon and you'll see how awesome um, it is and how it comes to life so quickly and a lot of times when approaching um, feathers especially peacock feathers because of the beautiful um, d very detailed pattern that they have on their really exquisite birds one of my favorite um, they can be really intimidating and look like a lot of work and you can kind of get lost in all those lines and the patterns on every single feather but I'm going to show you guys such a simple way you don't want to miss this so don't skip I've got a kind of a magic brush well it is definitely a magical brush and wait till you guys see how instant you're going to be able to make these feathers and it's addicting using this brush and you'll find all sorts of other uses for it too um, but for now I'm just going to keep using my angle brush just for the beginning stages of this and start just pushing and creating um, a messy kind of looking ovals. It doesn't really matter at this point. This is just the first layer and I'm kind of just getting a feel for what direction I want the tail to be uh, going in as it gets down towards the bottom of the canvas. Um, this is one of my intuitive paintings. I don't have any reference photo for this um, but if you guys want uh, more detailed reference photos of peacocks of course there's lots out there there's lots of copyright free reference photo sites there's Pinterest uh, I encourage you to do your own thing with it if you find one but this one is just from out of my head and the whole landscape is and feel free of course to paint along step by step with me so I'm just gonna keep um, evening out the top of the head here before I add its little crown on the top and I really really want to exaggerate um, the tail of this peacock I want this to really be the focal point of course their tails are just exquisite and beautiful and already exaggerated but I want to do that even more and have it curve over down and kind of get lost in with the palms I'm switching over to what I call my magic brush now. This, well, I have a couple magic brushes. One is a stipple brush, but this one is a rake fan brush. And I dipped it in white, maybe off-white with a little bit of blue or that green, it doesn't matter, mostly white. And look, we've got that perfect shape for the crown for a peacock. And then I just dip into my blue and just tap a little bit of that bluey fuzzy stuff for the top of it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit using carefully using the corner of my brush here, but you can use a liner brush if you want. If you kind of curve over and use just the concentrating using the very tip end of that brush, you can use it as a liner brush if you're careful. Now where I place the eye is wrong. Skip that guys. I'm going to move it up. It should be higher up. Um, of course you can put it wherever you want, but I just want you to know that later on I eventually cover that up and, and uh, go over it. But here I'm going to take all those three colors and sometimes they're going to be leaning towards more blue, sometimes more white, a little bit more yellow so or yellowy green. So it just goes to show you it doesn't matter what combination you use here as, as long as you're using these three colors. Um, sometimes uh, the ratio is going to be different. It doesn't matter. It's going to look really beautiful. But see how you kind of just pull, scoop, and then go back up and you get instant pattern so it saves you so much time and effort having to do all those little lines and the pattern separately and to be honest this brush is so much fun to use it's addicting you guys are going to love this now i got mine from michael's in canada you can get them online the um, make of this brush uh, happens to be royal langnickel 
Um, there's lots of different ones out there. I have a rake filbert brush that I use too. So I hope you guys uh, find this brush because it's really, really beneficial and makes painting a lot of things more fun and easy. So I'm going to continue along. I'm going to use this brush quite a bit. You can use it for palms and your waterfalls as well if you want to. I'm going to make them smaller and smaller, some really dramatic and um, larger on the bottoms of them. So you can really manipulate this brush around to make those uh, feathers narrower where you have to, to give um, the bird a little bit more, um, kind of like you're getting the side view of it, how it's twisting around. So you can get those feathers from a different angle just by making them narrower. So you're just going to do a tighter pull and then a larger scoop, obviously, where you want them to be bigger. Now, there is like this uh, dot or circle uh, inside each of the feathers. You can do white, you can do blue, or you can do the green yellow, or you can do all three if you want. It depends on how much detail you want to add. Um, but all, I'm, all I end up doing is just dipping in the corner of this brush and just tapping and dabbing. And uh, I, I was really actually surprised at how quickly I was able to um, paint this bird and these palms and the waterfalls. This painting looks like it took hours and hours, but in all honesty, this is real time, you guys. It's not sped up. So I know you guys are going to uh, enjoy painting along with me to this one. And be sure to share your versions up on the Facebook group. It's free to join. I'll leave a link below. I'm going to add some more details down here and just keep building this up, doing the same techniques. I'll come in with some more palms, uh, highlights on my waterfalls, and some more sun rays. I'm also going to later on towards the end of the video come in with just straight phthalo blue on the uh, darkest parts of this painting, the background, which is just straight black. I want to go over it. It's still kind of at first glance going to look uh, black, but it's going to be more of a richer, cooler blue black. So you'll see that at the very end. And I'm going to clean this beak up a little bit, come in and go over, cut in with my black, take some of that paint off where I uh, kind of went out of the lines a little bit. So it just looks cl more cleaned up now and I'll cut around wherever I need to just with my black.
So after spending some more time um, adding some more feathers and pattern here with this brush, you really <laughs> get addicted to using this brush. It's so much fun to use. I am going to switch over to another brush finally and add some more sun rays. So here I've got my either flat brush or an angle brush you could use. A little bit of that green yellow with some white water. You really, when painting sun rays, you want them to be transparent. So you definitely need to have ratio of uh, a little bit of water in there so 70 maybe uh, maybe 50 50 actually it could be 50 50 depending on how c3 you want your sun rays to be uh, with working on a black canvas you may need a little bit more paint than water just just so that it shows up and i'm adding more sun rays now because i thought it would be pretty to have some of them come over and um, kind of just shine down on some of the feathers very subtly and uh, some of those palms um, but you can add your sun rays before mid painting and after so it just goes to show you um, you can create this layered effect and uh, add more sun rays throughout the the painting process it's totally up to you and if you don't like the way they look at the very end if you go over too much and you don't like it you can always go over top so you'll see that I'm gonna go over top of some of these palms um, and I'll just demonstrate for you guys how I did that here in just a, just a few minutes. So as you can see, you can easily come in and add more palms after your sun rays. I'm going to add a few more finishing touches here. I've got that green, greeny yellow on the corner of my brush and I'm just pushing and tapping in. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can use uh, the blue, you can leave it just with blue if you want. I really like this little pop of bright green. I love all these colors together. It's one of my favorite color combinations. It reminds me of some set of chairs we we had when I was growing up oh, way back in the early 80s. <laughs> and I was always really drawn to this color combination. They were so, so beautiful. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and that you learned a lot. Please uh, like this video, leave a comment below if you enjoyed this one. And of course, subscribe to my channel. It helps my videos out there in the YouTube algorithm so more people can view my artwork and enjoy my tutorials. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Happy painting, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!